mo molten iron into these forms. Yes. And then what, they cool and it's like jello? What happens? Yeah, if we ripped them open right away and brought them into the world really quickly while they're still orange cups and they're still glowing, then it makes the, the metal finished product very brittle. And so we want these to be cookware. We want them to be very strong. So we leave them to sit and incubate overnight. And that, that makes like a really tinsel, higher tinsel strength. This is the risk we take when we do this. Like sometimes molds split open entirely and you get like, you know, this is the whole thing in the center filled. So these are little New Jerseys. Yeah. That Which are freaking adorable. They're super cute. Come on, yeah, right? yeah, right? But the whole thing like popped open and the metal just went everywhere. So Texas, Texas is a 30 pound casting, but this is what happens when you don't have hot enough metal. So right. we're missing like a whole right. side over there. So when you open this up, you can only imagine after all of this work, you know, it'd be terrible to... It's a crummy way to spend an afternoon if you right. don't get something groovy out of it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so first we're gonna snip these bands to free the two halves together. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna just kind of hit it with, I'll have you take a sledgehammer and I'm gonna have you hit this like big cup thing. It's gonna sort of shatter the top half of the mold. I feel both mm -hmm. wrong in hitting the state of Wisconsin with a sledgehammer, <laughs> but both right in freeing the state of Wisconsin yeah, from its bombs. Yeah, you're liberating it, yeah. yeah. That was like, that was like perfect form, Kyle. Was it? Yeah. All right, so that's that's kind of all you need, like to. Oh my God, that's amazing! Check and that out. What is it? Whoa, this is like Christmas. Oh, this is so cool. Isn't that fun? It yeah. has like a bunch of sand stuck to it, so we can kind of reveal like more of it by uh, by scraping it. I have like a little putty knife over there. But then Solid this, thing. you're gonna like polish, shave down. What are you gonna do to make yeah. it pretty? Um, so we get we go through a series of grinding processes. We have a bench grinder and an angle grinder, like a cutoff wheel that uh -huh. we're gonna take and, and like cut these parts off just to get the pan away from the gating. And then we will do some finish grinding with um, with a just a regular grinding wheel. I'm trying to feather this out, and I'm trying to like uh, so this is this is kind of an important part with the, the grinder marks. I I try to make all the grinding. Um, be essentially seamless, so I don't want people to really see a lot of the tooling on it. Right. So this is the very first rough step, is just to kind of get it flat, and then I'll go into this uh, more with a uh, Dremel tool and a carbide bit, and I kind of try to get back the, te the texture by skipping it across it and trying to uh, recreate some of the, the cast texture. But this is a big deal for how hand done, handmade, yeah, what craft absolutely. this still is. It isn't just poured, boom, out, Right. Down, it looks cool on your wall. Right. Yeah. No, I definitely hand, you know, I handle each of these very individually. They have, uh, I might gate them a little separately. I might do the vents a little differently. And so every one of them is very, um, is very intimately handled. And, yeah. and I, you know, I take the glove off when it's cool and I make sure that all the edges are going to be like super, like there's no like parts that are going to catch your finger on yeah. the other side. It's and finished. Stuff, so. Yeah. Yeah. So I get that all ground down and then I send it out to Sandblaster. He gets um, you know, everything. the last everything, right? Yeah. And then uh, yeah. it comes back to me totally raw and gray and then it's ready for seasoning. Because people don't really recognize iron to be gray from the onset. You know, we kind of see like, oh, this is a cast iron pan, it's black. And then the seasoning is the revered or the coveted blackening. This is raw iron and yeah. this is what you do to it after. And so we do it in-house with wood fires and organic flaxseed oil. So what happens is uh, we throw them into fire. It's, uh, it's Again. Like, yeah, right. <laughs> Baptism by fire, essentially. And uh, we get them rocking hot, and then we spray them with oil. So what that does is it polymerizes the oil on the surface of the pan, and it smokes off hideously, and then it creates that first layer of seven that you do for your very first seasoning. I call them living, uh, living members of your cookware arsenal, essentially. So you have to keep them you have to keep them maintained. We have like a seven step process because it's what keeps cookware heirloom, essentially. Yeah. It's what, how you can hand it down. And so we just start it. We start that process. It protects the pan and shipping and it also gives people something to rock right out of the box. We have right? pans that have been passed down from aunts and grandmothers that we cook with now that is cast iron. Isn't that crazy? You're like eating your grandma's food. In a good way. In a good way, in a yeah. loving way. <laughs> Sorry, I took it. See, it's just that easy. <laughs> That's my report. Two, two people, people got oh, burned. That's no big deal. Two people got burned and we got like 20 True. skillets. Yeah, so we have this ritual that's kind of been a policy of the studio whenever we're done. We are all going to take a swig of beer and we circle up. And on the count of three, we do a very um, loving but ritualistic spit 
together onto the furnace. So this is to a very safe pour with good people, good friends uh, in Wisconsin, Wisconsin made all the way by hand. Thank you so much for your grit and glory. One, two, three. <laughs> and that's it! And that's it!